where you are. You're at reInvent. We are live in Vegas. It's reInvent 2024. And we're so happy to have you here with us. My name is Fiona McCann. I am a solutions architect at AWS. I work in the public sector with nonprofits, and I also have the pleasure of working with my wonderful co-host Todd. Todd, how you doing? Hey everybody, I am doing well. I yeah. made it through lunch. I'm still here. I'm still awake. He's I'm alive. Doing well. Yeah, I'm doing well. <laughs> hey everybody, I'm Todd Fortier. I'm a senior solutions architect here at AWS, where I work on something called the AWS Solutions Library. Go check it out. We have tons of good stuff in here. But today we are here to talk some one of my favorite foundational services. We call them foundational services, uh, S3. S3, yeah, I think we're going to be talking about simplifying data lakes at scale, if I do believe that's true. And we have some wonderful um, service team members here who may want to introduce themselves. Sure. Hey, hi, everyone. Hi, I'm Manupriti Varade. I'm a senior product manager with Amazon S3. Hi, everyone. I'm Prachi. I'm a senior solution architect aligned to S3. Wonderful, well thank you both so much for joining us on the show today. We've got um, audience members who are tuning in from all around the world. I know that we are on the US Hero page, so if you found us from the US Hero page, thank you so much for joining us. Hello, we're very happy to have you here. So we are talking S3 today. Before I let our hosts jump in and tell us what they're here for, we do have a poll question for you all. Who here knows about S3? Our question for you right now is how many objects are stored on S3 today. Todd, how many objects do you think are stored like, on S3 like a today? Thousand? Yeah, I was thinking like two or three Plus at or least. Minus. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, so. I think it's quite a bit more than that. I think we're up in the uh well, I'm not even going to take a guess. I want to let our audience guess on that. So yeah, take the poll. We want to know how many uh, objects you think are in S3. Uh, and let's get into it. Let's, uh, what, what are we, are we talking about? S3. S3 tables is a new product offering in Amazon S3. Uh, we it offers a purpose-built storage to store tabular data in S3. Uh, it provides fully managed Apache Iceberg tables right in S3. Very nice. And so tell us, how does this change the user experience for someone who you know, previously may not have been able to use this and, and express to you that this was something that they were needing? Yeah, so uh, customers today uh, create iceberg tables in S3. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, what we have heard from our customers is creating tables, managing these tables at scale mm -hmm. is uh, really difficult in terms of keeping them performant and also cost efficient mm -hmm. while keeping the security levels high. Uh, so uh, we, uh, the new S3 tables make that journey to uh, build and store their iceberg tables at scale a bit easier. That makes sense. Okay, so who are the typical users, the customers that have expressed this to you? What type of you know business role does this typically apply to? Yeah, so pretty much all the customers who implement data links. Uh, in terms of target person, I would say it's the data engineers, data architects, uh, analytics, data scientists, mm -hmm. even the machine learning engineers, all those who really need to access large amounts of data. Uh, they, they are really the our target customer users. And so what you're doing is you're kind of taking away some of that, some of the more um, ground level tasks that might have been time consuming for them and freeing them up, is that is that correct? That's one of the things, mm -hmm. but uh, really the other big part is like improving the performance and simplifying the security as well at scale for these customers. Got it, okay. So the security previously, how would that have been set up? Yeah. So. In normal S3 general purpose bucket, when you have to secure your tables, you need to know the actual physical location of those tables. In, I mean, the individual files, like data files and metadata files that are part of these iceberg tables. Mm -hmm. You need to know those individual files and then configure permissions. Okay. And doing that at, uh, at scale, uh, like tracking the location. It grows for, quickly. Exactly. <laughs> yes. All of a sudden, so, you don't just have one bucket. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. So what we do in this one is that we let you configure permissions directly at the table level. Okay. So you don't need to worry about where, how that is stored within your storage, mm -hmm. but you could define your permissions right at your tables. And like in this, we are offering tables as a new resource. So it has its own resource policies as well, where you could define permissions. Absolutely. So is this something that your customers have, have mentioned to you is what is what they're looking for? 
Absolutely. Yeah. As I mentioned, that it's it, it's quite a task to understand yeah. what's your logical table versus how it's stored within a storage. And what we really do here is that we're making it easy for them to just remember like what your tables and get, give find permissions on the tables without worrying about how those are stored and what where in which prefix and wherever it is. Like, Absolutely. I, permissions can get complicated pretty quickly, especially at scale and as, as organizations and projects are growing. Everyone who's in the chat, if anyone here works in security and you know has worked with permissions and thinks this implication like this might help you, let us know in the chat. Todd, I don't know, what are your thoughts on this? Is that something, something you'd enjoy? Yeah, so I'm trying to I'm trying to wrap my head around this. I'm catching up here. So we've got um, data. We, we store files into S3. Typically, those. What, what, what is, what's the data type of the files that are going into this uh, new S3? So. Uh your actual data is stored in Apache Parquet format. A Parquet format, okay. Yes. And, and what were some of the challenges with storing Parquet uh, in, in S3 previously? So, for many years, customers have chosen Apache Parquet as like the most popular file format to store their analytics data sets. Uh, while it has worked very well, but as our use cases have evolved, customers uh, have started realizing that they need much more stronger consistency in case of like multiple writers writing to yeah. the same data set. And also uh, flexibility in terms of uh, adding or uh, adding new schemas or modifying the schemas and partitions onto their existing data sets. Uh, what happened, the open table formats like Apache Iceberg really helps these customers achieve that level of consistency even when they have multiple writers writing onto the same data set and also offers other rich features like uh, time travel, schema evolution, and platform independence. And am I right in thinking that there's also a benefit for customers who you know, are having a, a vast number of snapshots that are created at their tables? And you know, it can be complex and resource intensive to keep those and then you know, try to um, let, let them go as necessary. How are you all helping customers with that challenge? Yeah, so uh, Iceberg offers a lot of benefits to our customers, right? And one of the things about Iceberg is that all the changes that you do in Iceberg are immutable in nature. So every write operation that you commit onto a table results into a new snapshot, which is great because it allows the customers to have those benefits like I mentioned about time travel and it consist strong consistency in case of multiple writers. Uh, but over the course of time, you end up accumulating a lot of snapshots, which mm -hmm. you don't may not really refer to the, all of those. And also, as you refer, as as you try to get those strong consistency, uh, like even uh, with multiple writers, you also end up seeing multiple like files, like data files and metadata files, mm -hmm. uh, due to like failed commits, failed right. operations, and uh, those may result into a storage which you, you are like it's no longer referenced into the table. Right. You're not gonna access it. It's not necessary anymore. Exactly. <laughs> so you really need to keep on like cleaning up those snapshots, those unreferenced mm -hmm. files. And uh, customers can do that. It's just what you've heard from the customers is that doing that takes a lot of time, right? A lot of tracking, and like they need to have separate teams. Right. Yeah. And so the technical use case really is. So we're talking about storing a, a columnar tabular format of data in the form of Parquet, and that serves as a foundation for our what what we typically see as a data lake on AWS, right? And and then we can start to query that with uh, Athena, which is our SQL query into that data lake, uh, and then maybe some business intelligence like QuickSight, what are some of the use cases that our customers are using for it? Like, how, how does that translate to like maybe an industry use case? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, well, uh, customers use Apache, like Apache Parquet and the Iceberg tables uh, for a variety of use cases. Yeah. Uh, some of the common use cases include like transactional data, uh, for storing transactional data, and like think of like financial firms right. uh, who store uh, transactional data in terms of like stock price, market information, uh, and uh, they use this, uh, they use like time travel like feature to actually get into analyzing this data over course of like, uh, for back testing the trading algorithms. The other most common use cases like loggings and events data. So customers mm. configure their logs or telemetry information coming in from IoT devices yeah. and uh, use the Apache Iceberg as the way to like analyze that data. Sounds like these are a lot of great use cases for S3 tables. I would love to see say, what these excited. tables see, look like. Can you give us a demo? For sure. Let's bring up that let's demo. Dive in. All right, so here we are in the console. Mm. Awesome. So as you can see in the console, and uh, we, do, we do have a new feature which is S3 table and we have been talking about it. Um, I'll just start by creating a new uh, table bucket. So in the demo, I'll be walking you through the process of creating the table bucket using the console and then I'll be showing you the features which we have been discussing like compaction and the snapshot management which awesome. can help you with 
um, the optimization and snapshot lifecycle management as well. Perfect. Right. Yeah. So let's let's dig into it. So um, just to create a table, click on create table bucket. Uh, provide an interactive name here. What's uh, your name gonna be? Uh, Big I'll orange probably... button. <laughs> I like the word orange, so I think I'll go with orange. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And then on air. Yeah. On yeah. Air. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, I'll click on uh, like just create it. Perfect. Uh, as you can also see, I've also integrated with the analytics service here already. I see. Okay. By this by default is disabled. But when you enable it, uh, it would be enabled for this bucket and the future buckets, uh, whatever mm -hmm. you're going to create it. And okay. so this is this is accessing Athena, Redshift, and EMR. That is right. Um, and you can also use um, your own Apache um, Iceberg, like your own Apache Spark um, as well as an open source in order to interact with the S3 table bucket as well. There so I'll, I'll just go ahead and start create um, the bucket. Once the bucket is created, you can see it in the console, how it looks like. Right now, the bucket does not have any namespace or any tables inside it. Okay. okay. Um, you can go ahead and start creating it. So, since we are short on time, what I have done is I've already created multiple buckets. Ah, you can see wow. I have multiple Genius. buckets. Yes. Wow! It's almost like <laughs> you knew you were coming here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, but um, I've created multiple namespace, multiple um, tables inside them, and this is how you can view them, um, how they look like, right? Okay. So let's take, uh, let's just do a, uh, uh, just let's see how it looks like. Yeah. Um, so what I'll be doing here is I'll be using Amazon EMR in order okay. to interact with my table. Perfect. Um, I've already created a namespace um, uh, there. So think of namespace as a logical entity where you can create your tables. Mm -hmm. So like a, a logical entity where you're maintaining different tables um, okay. in the format. So multiple tables in one namespace. Yes. yes. Got it. Right. Uh, as a part of next step, I'll be creating an empty table. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll just call it as um, on air nine. Let's say S table on air nine. Sounds like maybe we practice this eight times. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not really. I just like the number nine. Okay. I guess. Okay. <laughs> and so already, so far into this demo, I can already see how we are just optimizing for performance, right? We are yeah. starting. We're getting closer to uh, uh, the the data lake, typical kind of thing. And so we're going to optimize for that. So I see a namespace. I see, I even saw Athena quick out. But now we're in a, uh, a notebook here. We have an empty a Jupyter, table. A Jupyter notebook. We yep. have an empty table. Where are we going? So yeah, now uh, then we'll start verifying how the table looks like. So there okay. are a few important features of S3 tables, which we I think I pretty mentioned earlier, like the compaction, um, the snapshot management, and mm. the unreferenced file. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how these look like on the table on the on the table which I just created. Perfect. Right. Um, I do have the commands mm. handy uh, with me. So what I'm doing here is, in order to see if the compaction or the snapshot has run on my table, mm -hmm. I can make use of the get table menu maintenance job status. Okay. As soon as I run this, um, I need to change this to... To nine. Yes. I always love a good CLI demo. <laughs> nice and big. Absolutely. Right. So... All right. Can we give that a quick zoom in? I'd oh, love to see this a little sure. closer. Perfect. Okay. So it says that our status for the compaction is successful. Yeah. Uh, so what happens is S3 tables... Um, Monitors, I would say the um, uh, sorry, S3 in, in the back end monitors the S3 table just to check if the um, if, if anything needs to be compacted or if any snapshot management needs to be run on it. Mm -hmm. uh, this this would happen once the data has been written to it, but it will keep on checking it continuously just to verify. Okay, mm -hmm. do I need to run the compaction on this? Do I need to run the snapshot management on this or not? And that's the reason you can see status as successful, unsuccessful, or not yet run. Not yet run. Okay. So okay. The, so compaction so, is a way to uh, to to optimize the data on, in the S3 bucket. Yeah. Almost, I'm thinking like yeah. back in the old days. This is maybe this is a terrible reference, but almost like defragging a hard drive, right? Is that, am I thinking about it rightly, or is that a bad kinda, reference? Kinda. Okay. So the uh, the new That's thing about yeah. So the new thing about S3 tables is like you we have a new bucket type, mm -hmm. and this bucket type offers about ten times higher. Uh, Transaction per second uh, performance wow. compared to three times, times higher. Yes. yes. Wow. And also three times higher improvement in the query performance okay. compared to the iceberg tables and general purpose bucket. And okay. we do that uh, the three times performance is through the compaction. And compaction mm -hmm. is a way to help you. Exactly. Okay. So yeah. hyper optimize uh, yes. for this for querying. Okay. Yeah. This actually brings me to the next point: how it looks like. Oh my God! It looks like it's yeah. But um, okay. 
So if I run this, yeah, um, yeah you can see uh, I'm making use of the get table maintenance configuration. Okay. Uh, right. And this is where Anupriti was mentioning about the compaction just now when we were talking about, right? Mm -hmm. It's enabled by default on the tables which we create, so the customers okay. don't have to really go back to the tables, enable or it's disable managed it. By, yeah. It's managed by AWS, it's Top managed by S3, right? <laughs> and the compaction size is 512 MB. Okay. Um, and you can also see the snapshot management uh, feature here. Like, it, the snapshot management would work if both the conditions are met. That means that the minimum snapshot, uh, the minimum number of snapshots to keep and the maximum number of hours it needs to be retained. So it will only expire or manage the number of snapshots based on the, these two criteria. Okay. Okay. So yeah. you mentioned that with the compaction, this is enabled by default. How much of this is up to the customer? Are they Do they get to choose the target file size? Do they get to choose the minimum number and maximum number of snapshots to keep? They keep. can. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's all yeah. configurable. They can also disable it on that bucket okay. and on at the table level as well. Yeah. Okay. And helpful. Yeah. And we'll see it actually on one of the tables um, as we go forward. All right, sure. Yeah. Okay, let's get there. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. And the other thing about a table, uh, about an S3 table, uh, is about how you can look into the maintenance of the table, um, how it looks like. Um, sorry. Oh, it looks like my. Yeah, that's right. We are live, so this is a live demo. It, it happens. Right we always have. There we yeah, go. Yeah, there yeah. it is. Yeah. Sorry about it. I think there was some. No, that's perfect. Yeah, but no, yeah. No. we're good. Yeah. So this was about the unreferenced file. Okay. Um, I think we have been discussing about the unreferenced file earlier. Um, if any file is unreferenced in your table, it will remove the file based on the configuration you have. Okay. okay. Again, it needs to be a combination or an and, I would say, of mm. the parameters which you see. That is an unreferenced days right. and the concurrent days. Because if it's unreferenced, we don't want to be storing it. Exactly. I don't you, need it. You don't want to pay for it as uh -huh. well. So, yeah. Okay, for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so optimized almost on the cost side as yes. well. Yes. Okay, yeah. great. Storage and cost both. Perfect. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So um, let's see further. Um, so what I'm doing here is I created a table um, earlier mm -hmm. and we verified the status of the table using CLIs. Um, now, since this is a new table, ID it should have no data inside it. Okay. And that's what I can do by check checking the number of files or the count of the files inside okay. it. And uh, once the job progresses, ID the, yeah, it got, it got completed. Uh, you can see the count as zero. That means okay. there's nothing inside the particular mm -hmm. table, right? Uh, coming to the important bit about it, we have been talking about snapshot management, right? right. How to verify if there's any snapshot attach, attached to my table at this point of time. So I can run a simple Spark query again on my table in order to do it. All right. Um, and I'm just doing a history. Okay. So this pulls up the status or the number of snapshot associated with my table at this point of time. Um, you can see the snapshot ID is null. The reason it is null because there's no snapshot of it. I've not ingested any data. Right. Okay. So, I'm going ahead and just ingest Go for it. it. Ingest some data. Hey, yeah. while you're ingesting that yeah. data, I want to check in on our poll. Here I think we, we should just check a in on the poll. Yeah. How many S3 objects are stored? Do we think it was today? more than three, Todd? What's um, that yeah, answer on the poll? I was way off on the objects. <laughs> we got the poll coming up. And the poll is more right. than a tr Oh, so we were kind of evenly split here. More than 400 trillion, more, more than, than 500 five. trillion. But the more than a trillion. Well, I think that would What's be What's the correct true. answer? We have the S3 experts right here. It's more than 400 trillion. More than 400 oh. trillion. If your guess is more than 400 trillion, great work. So I guess more than one tw trillion is technically I right. right. I guess yeah. I said more than two. <laughs> okay, so we, we've added some data. Let's wrap over this up. Yeah, so we have loaded some data. We have um, wrote some data inside it. And then I'm verifying um, the count again on the data. Um, once this particular thing runs, you can see um, that once this runs, uh, we can see the count has increased. There you go. And yeah. we would also be able to see the snapshot, number of snapshots um, associated with it, right? Um, so I, I definitely want to show compaction and uh, the snapshot management. Um, so what I'm going to do is I I had a I, bug. Yep. Unfortunately, we do have to uh, cut you off, but the good thing is that all of this is now released for our customers to get to see. We have all of the data. It's uploaded. Our um, documentation is online. Go ahead and find it. Thank you all so much for joining us. Stay uh, with us, and we will see you very soon.